Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with, with your word for the day. And uh, we're going to be looking at a passage in Mark chapter 3 today, uh, uh, verse 7 and following. But before I get to that, do you like crowds? Do you like being in the midst of crowds uh, uh, at church? Do you like a crowd uh, at a stadium? When you're at a sporting event, do you like a crowd? I know right now or the stadiums are not having crowds and churches don't want crowds and, and stuff. But preference, do you, do you like crowds in those settings? Do you like crowds when you're at a concert uh, with your uh, favorite band? There's something about the energy of those crowds, but we don't always like crowds, do we? Like, for instance, uh, I don't like crowds when I'm getting on an airplane. I, every time I get on an airplane, I'm hoping the flight is only half full and the seat next to me is empty and I've got room to spread out and do that. So I don't always like crowds. Or, or if you go to the beach or some other place for a vacation, you're, I don't know about you, but I'm always hoping, I hope there's not a big crowd. I hope we kind of catch the downtime. If you're going to Disney, you want the, like, the slowest day of the year. We don't want crowds then. So how do we feel about crowds? Because Jesus drew crowds. Okay, Mark chapter 3, here's, here's what it tells us. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great crowd followed from Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea and from the, beyond the Jordan and from all around Tyre and Sidon. In other words, people from everywhere were coming to see Jesus. And when the great crowd heard all that he was doing, they came to him. And Jesus told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, lest they crush him. For he had healed many, so that all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. Jesus drew crowds. Uh, people were amazed by Jesus. They were amazed by his wisdom. They were amazed by the miracles. They were impressed by his authority as he taught. The demons even recognized him as the son of God. And of course, he didn't want them to spill the beans. So he told them to shut up. Uh, and by the way, can I just tell you that Jesus drew crowds when he walked this earth and Jesus still draws crowds of people. Jesus draws people to himself because people still crave biblical wisdom. I mean, hopefully you're watching this because you want to learn a little bit more, be encouraged a little bit more and, and help understand God's word a little bit more. People still want wisdom. People are desperate for hope and purpose. And yes, they're impressed by authentic spiritual authority. And, and so they're still drawn to Jesus, not to religion, not to personalities, but to Jesus. And, and what's interesting is that in my lifetime, I've seen a lot of Christians and a lot of churches that are anti-crowd. Uh, and this is, I'm talking about before the COVID thing, before social distancing was a, a deal. Uh, there was a lot of Christians, a lot of churches that I've run into that were kind of anti-crowd. In other words, if you were drawing a crowd, they kind of cast aspersions on that and said, well, yeah, but you guys are compromising the gospel. You guys are just pleasing people. You're tickling their ears. Uh, all you care about as a church is numbers. And, uh, and, and having been the recipient of a lot of those accusations, can I just tell you, uh, Jesus drew crowds and I think Jesus still draws crowds. And I think we ought to be excited about crowds because crowds represent people. And our mission at Calvary is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. And we can't do that without people who don't know him coming to church and being exposed to the gospel by you and, and your friends and your life group and your family that are sharing your love for Jesus and encouraging people to come and check it out. And so uh, I'm pro-crowd when it comes to faith, because we want to share the gospel with as many people as possible. Uh, and, uh, and what I've come to learn is that people have different kinds of mindsets. So some people have what I would call a remnant mindset. These are these churches that are kind of anti-crowd. That They're like, well, I just think you just care about the numbers. And, and I do care about the numbers because God cares about numbers. There's a book in the Bible called Numbers. We all know how many days it took for to create the world. We all know how many commandments there are, how many tribes there are, how many apostles there are, all that kind of stuff. Numbers are important. We know how many people got saved on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people. So uh, numbers kind of matter. But there, there's this group of people who kind of have a, a remnant mindset. And, and they, they kind of see themselves as the few and the faithful and no one else is really interested in the truth. No one else wants to listen. They're just going to hunker down and they're going to hang on until Jesus comes. I am not a fan of the remnant mindset. Just being honest, I don't think that's what Jesus is about. Instead, what I think we need to have is we need to have a rescue mindset. A rescue mindset. 
that, that people are broken and they're hurting and they're lost and need someone to go and find them and heal them and, and, and encourage them and bring them home and bring them to Jesus so that they can experience that life-changing power that you and I have tasted and know is good. Uh, because we're called to heal and we're called to comfort and we're called to find those people and introduce them to the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Uh, so what did Jesus do? that drew crowds. Uh, he taught truth. He healed people. He led them to life change. Uh, here at Calvary, that's what we're committed to doing. We're going to teach truth. We're going to offer healing to people. And we're going to celebrate life change. And, uh, and I believe if we do those things, uh, that people are going to come and people are going to get saved and people's lives are going to be changed, and we're going to celebrate what God does in the midst of the crowd. So today, uh, as much as you may not want it, I hope and pray that God puts you in the midst of a crowd, and you have a chance to represent Jesus in the crowd. God bless. Have a beautiful day.